Good evening. Uli pa tayong mag-aaral ngayon ng uh, salita ng Diyos sa ating Pastor's Hour. Ang topic natin for tonight ay a heavenly perspective. Isang pananaw na makalangit. Isang pananaw na eternal. Ang ating passage ay kukunin natin sa Pangalawang Korento, 2 Corinthians chapter 4, 15 to 18. All this is for your benefit, so that the grace that is reaching more and more people may cause thanksgiving to overflow to the glory of God. Therefore, we do not lose heart, though outwardly, We are wasting away, yet inwardly we are being renewed day by day. For our light and momentary troubles are achieving for us an eternal glory that far outweighs them all. So we fixed our eyes not on what is seen, but on what is unseen. For what is seen is temporary, but what is unseen is eternal. Lord, as we study your word this evening, guide us, Lord God. Provide us with your wisdom and knowledge, both the speaker, your worker, and the hearers, Panginoon. You are the God who is in control of everything and to you we submit ourselves in Jesus name Amen Amen. In this chapter 4 of 2 Corinthians Paul tells of his hardships for example based on verses 8 to 11 2 Corinthians chapter 4 For example, he was hard pressed in every side He was perplexed and he was persecuted But in all this he was always able to look at the bright side of life Example Sabi niya He said he was persecuted but a good thing he added but not abandoned. This will form the background of our study. As an illustration As an illustration, I'm sure you have heard of Fanny Crosby. He is a well-known lyri- lyric writer, lyricist, writing more than 9,000 hymns. One of which is the song Blessed Assurance Who among you have not heard the song Blessed Assurance and the song To God Be the Glory Kay Fanny Crosby yan. But while she was yet an infant Fanny Crosby became blind One time isang kakilala ang nagsabi sa kanya I think it is a great pity that the master that did not give you sight when he showered you with so many other gifts in your life sagot ni Fanny Crosby sabi niya do you know That 
if at birth I had been given one petition, it would have been that I were born blind. Because when I get to heaven, the first face that shall ever gladden my heart, my sight, will be that of my Savior. How could she say that? The answer, because she saw life with an eternal perspective. She looked at life with a heavenly perspective. An eternal perspective differentiates us from the world. Ini itinatangi tayo. It gives us uniqueness. Para hindi tayo masasabing kabilang tayo ng mundo. It changes our approach, our response to many things. It changes our views of many concepts. Example, our concept of death and dying. Kamatayan. In verse 16 of 2 Corinthians chapter 4, our bodies may be dying, but we are being transformed. Our spirit are being transformed. Troubles. What about troubles? Troubles and sufferings. In verse 17, our present troubles are small and won't last long. Yun yung sinasabing, our light and momentary troubles. But they will produce for us a glory that vastly outweighs the troubles that we are going through and will last forever. A glory that is so much, much more than the troubles that we are suffering and will last forever. The future. What is our view of the future? Verse 18. In looking at the future, we don't look at the troubles we now see, but rather we fix our eyes, our gaze, yung ating paningin, on what cannot be seen. Because what we see now will soon be gone. What we can see will last forever. That's what the future is all about. Next concept. What's our viewpoint of persons and people? We tend to look at people through outside appearances. Siya ba'y maliit? Siya ba'y kagalang-galang? Siya ba ay guwapo? O guwapa? Yun ang ating tinitingnan. But Paul says, from now on, we regard no one according to the flesh. That's in 2 Corinthians 5 verse 16. Instead of looking at the outside looks, outside appearance, we should be concerned with what is in the heart. The real person. What's inside that person? That person. That should be our concern. Another concept. Mga examples lang ito. Ng mga concept na dapat mabago ng ating paningin. Wherein our our viewpoint should should no longer be the worldly perspective, but 
the eternal perspective. Wealth, treasures, possessions, money. Anong konsepto natin dyan? Well, siya, siya yung, sila yung pinagsihirapan natin. In fact, we slave for them. We strive for them. We, we, we look at them as necessary for our existence. Pero anong sabi ni Heso Kristo tungkol sa mga ito? Our Lord Himself told us to go for treasures that will last and, and say that we should lay them up in heaven, not earthly treasures. That's in Matthew 16, verse 19 to 21. Then He added that we cannot serve two masters at the same time. Mamun. Cannot, we cannot serve the Lord and Mammon. Alam mo kung bakit? Because treasures, wealth, possessions, money have a tendency to become our masters. Napakaganda nga siguro kung itong mga ito ay ating alipin. Hindi tayo ang inaalipin. Let them be our slaves and let, at let us be their masters. A heavenly perspective is an eternal perspective. It is also a biblical perspective, a way of looking at things. Aside from what we have discussed, change in our in 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 our concepts of different uh, things, mayroon din siyang ipapang nagagawa sa atin according to 2 Corinthians chapter 4. Okay? Also, aside from changing our approach to and the concept of things, eternal perspective also, number one, teaches us to focus on goals rather than on the temporary effects of troubles and sufferings. Pain, dislocations, discomfort sinasabi sa atin ng heavenly perspective ang tinuturo sa atin do not focus on these troubles on the pains, the discomfort that the troubles is causing but rather focus on the goal Focusing on the temporary, okay? Focusing on the temporary, temporary effects of uh, of things makes us lose heart. It makes us lose heart. Nakikita natin yung hirap, nakikita natin yung sakit na. Uh, na madadaram, madadama natin as we go through it. You know? Ito yung, ito yung nararanasan ni Kristo eh. Nung siya ay nasa Garden of Gethsemane. Makita niya yung pain. Nakita niya yung suffering na dadanasin niya. That's why he prayed. Na, Lord, let this cup pass away from me. Kung pwede sana. That's it. But then because he focused on the goal. What was the goal? Millions of souls coming into the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God coming down on earth. That's the goal. That's the objective. But when we look at things short-sightedly, we will lose heart. Bigat. No? We will consider quitting. We will consider quitting. We will quit. And sometimes, yung mga iba, they are driven to depression. No? Ating mga kapanahon, sa ating kapanahonan ngayon, okay? 
Marami tayong nararanasan na hindi maganda. But then, let us try to focus on goals. Especially, the goal of God. Okay? The goal of God. In preaching the gospel, Paul faced trials, sufferings, and distress. But he realized someday they would end. And then he will receive God's rest and reward. Yun ang kanyang goal eh, To receive what God has promised. And for him, that was rest and reward. That's why he labored in the ministry despite the problems, the hindrances, the persecution. In the face of troubles, it's easy to focus on the pain rather than on the ultimate goal. But we must learn to overcome this tendency. Example, ang mga athletes, mga atleta, they concentrate on the finish line. Yun yung goal eh. Marating ko yung finish line. And they tend to ignore the stress, the discomfort of the game. Isang atleta, yung finish line, lalo, lalo na isang runner, yung speed runner, yung mga 100 meter dash, 200 meter dash, naka-fix doon sa finish line. Hindi na iniintende yung hirap yung struggle ng katawan yung stress yung init even the pain yung mga muscle pain hindi na nila the discomfort doon sila nakafocus instead on the finish line so a heavenly perspective teaches us to focus on our goals rather than on the temporary effects of the trouble. Number two, an eternal, eter, an eternal perspective empowers us to persevere in the face of the problem. Kanina, focus on the goal. Ngayon, empower us to persevere in the face of the problem. lalo na yung mga problems on relationships in the church problems on relationship in the family and the workplace these things challenge us no and for many this causes them to consider quitting what they are doing quit the work quit the ministry leave home to quit to stop to cut the relationship rather than quitting when problems wear you down as persecution wore Paul down, Paul concentrated, he concentrated on the inner strength provided by the Holy Spirit. Ephesians 3.16 yan. Instead of allowing our fatigue, pain, yung mga criticisms, okay, that we receive, instead of allowing them to force us to quit to stop to turn away let us renew our commitment to serve Christ allow the Holy Spirit to strengthen us comfort us strengthen us and make us stand in the face of these problems as you admit your weakness 
as you admit your weakness, Lord, mahina ako. Parang hindi ko na kaya itong mga problema ito. As you admit your weakness, then you allow the resurrection power of Jesus Christ to strengthen you. For when I am weak, He is strong, sabi ni San Pablo. You will be strengthened moment by moment. Pangatlo, an eternal, uh, eternal perspective makes us see troubles as opportunities. Hindi kakulangan, hindi kabigatan, pero makikita natin itong mga problema ng ito as opportunities. Ngayon lang sa ating kapanahunan, yes, we, have, we are facing troubles. We are facing limitations. Marami ang mga wala ng trabaho, marami ang nagugutom, may mga nagkakasakit na, iba't ibang klaseng sakit. But, the opportunity, the opportunity is for the gospel. The opportunity to make good. Hindi dyan. Siguro nakarinig kayo sa mga kwento ng pagbabangon na pinapakita sa sa mga TV programs. How halos wala nang makain, nakabangon, and now they are able to help others. Troubles are opportunities. Troubles should not diminish our eagerness or this illusion us. Instead, let us realize that there is a purpose or benefit that we can get out of this trouble or pain. Among this, among this benefit that we can get out of the troubles. Number one, letter A, under under number three, under letter uh, letter C, under letter C, number one. Troubles reminds us that bago din tayo nakapasok sa harian reminds us of Christ suffering for us. It reminds us. And because of that, number two, it keeps us from being prideful. It keeps us from being prideful. Number three, it causes us to look beyond this brief life. Ang iksila ng buhay na ito, 70, 80 years, you're lucky if you, if you reach 100 or more. Ang iksila, when compared to eternity. Imagine eternity. You have eternity ahead of you. This is a very short life. Number four, it also presents to us an opportunity to prove our faith to others. Troubles, sa pamamagitan ng troubles, we can prove our faith in God to others. Number five, troubles also gives God an opportunity. Opportunity to prove His power in our life. Kaya mo yung nangyari kay Moses. Anong trouble niya? Number one trouble niya is Pharaoh and his magicians. Okay? But God proved His power through Moses. And the goal was achieved. Israel was liberated. Okay? So, eternal perspective teaches us to focus on our goals. Eternal perspective empowers us to persevere. Eternal perspective makes us see troubles as opportunity. And pang-apat, eternal perspective allows us or empowers us 
to lay up treasure in heaven, not on earth. Lay up treasures in heaven, not on earth. Ay, kita niyo mga kapatid. Kaya napakahalaga na tayo ay magkakaroon ng eternal perspective. Lalo na sa ating kapanahonan ngayon. No? Let us apply our study this evening to our life today. Ano ba buhay natin? We are under quarantine. We are still in lockdown mode. Especially kaming mga senior citizens. No, no. Bahay lang kayo. Mga mga 20 years below, no. Bahay lang kayo. Well, of course, with exceptions. But it, that's the general rule. Bahay lang kayo. Siguro dahil naranasan na natin ng lockdown, alam nyo na ang ibig sabihin nun. Anong, alam nyo na ang, ibig, ang, ang implication nung hindi ka pwedeng lumabas ng bahay. Kaya nga marami mga opisina ang nagsarado. Maraming empleyadong nawalan ng trabaho. Itong, itong pagluwag ng quarantine, bumaba sa, sa GCQ from ECQ. May mga nagbukas pero hindi yung dating capacity. Sana nga, lumuwag pa. But still, what we we were doing before COVID, hindi na natin maabot yun. Yung ating dating normal, hindi na yun. Kaya nga may sinasabi na tayong new normal. So, marami pa rin sa atin ang discourage. Marami pa rin na sa atin ang depressed. Marami pa rin sa atin ang hopeless. Marami pa rin sa atin ang nagki-question about the future. Ano na nga ba? Eh, lalo na, anong mangyayari sa susunod nating henerasyon? Sa ating mga Uh, sa aming mga senior ang, ang aming next na henerasyong sinasabi yung mga apo ano maging buhay nila but a heavenly perspective will give us a picture anong picture to the reality that God has a purpose for all these things hindi lang purpose. He has a plan for these things. I remember, when God has a plan, walang backup plan yan. Why? Because His plan will work. He has only one plan. God has only plan A. The world is on plan B. But plan A will overcome As time goes on. In the right time, we will experience God's plan A. And we will be taken away from the world's plan B. If God has a purpose and a plan for all these things, for what is happening to us today, what we should do is let us try to see what is that. What that is. Because what is happening, God will use it, will fit it into His own calendar of events. God has a calendar of events. And what the sons of the devil are trying to, to do God will make something good out of them, out of it. Fit it into His calendar. God has a plan. God has a purpose. God has a plan. And God has a calendar of events, my friend. 
may, ka, may sinasabi nga eh. The way we view eternity will affect the way we live in time. The way we live today in time. So let's end this uh, study with a prayer. I invite you to bow, bow, bow down our heads as we pray. Dear God, our loving Father, please help us to see this life from your perspective, from the heavenly perspective that you have. Remind us, Lord, that our trials, the trials that we are facing today, the hindrances, however difficult that they are momentary, that one day they will fade from view, especially when we see you face to face. And that is our hope. On that hope, we, we, we place our life. Titus 2.13 As we wait for that blessed hope, the glorious appearing of our God and Savior, Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord, for this night. Thank you, Lord, for your faithfulness and goodness. Thank you, Lord, that we can trust in your promises and that we can lay down our lives for you because we know who controls our life. We entrust our lives to you. Not only our lives, but the lives of our loved ones. We, we know you hold our life in the palm of your hands. Thank you, Lord. This is our prayer in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen.